Hey and welcome, I'm your boy Solo. In this video I'll be going over 8 tips for OBS to help get you started. 8 things I wish I knew when I started. Before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. These are just some things I wish I knew when I first started. This is aimed at newer users. If you have used OBS for a long time, you might still find one or two in here that you didn't know. The first one on my list is going to be transforms. I find this very useful if something is like too far off screen or if you just need to make it fit the canvas or the screen perfectly. This option is used by right clicking any source. So I moved one off screen here so we couldn't see it. You can't get it. I'll show you here. Like it's way up there. I can't, I can't reach it. I can't bring it down. This is the display capture. So what we're going to do is just right click on it, go to transform and it's going to give us some options. Now there's a couple really good ones in here like center to screen and fit to screen. These are the two I most use but there's stretch to screen, center vertical, and center horizontal. So if you need to have like text centered in your screen, you can center horizontal or center vertical. So you can get something lined up perfectly on your screen as well. So this is very useful for a lot of things. And this is one of the things that I wish I knew when I first started using OBS. So what we're gonna do here is for example, we're gonna center to the screen. There it is way up there. It was a little off. Okay, and you seen there, I did it more than one time. And then after that, you would just have to go in here in the transforms again, and you'll be able to select stretch to screen or fit to screen. Like I said, these are very useful tools and it's something I super enjoy. Number two is snipping. The next is snipping. By default, this is set to 10 and now it allows you to move things around. It'll clip. So if you're trying to move something with just a tiny little bit of space and you can't quite get it, in settings, all you'll have to do is on the general tab is scroll down here and it'll say snipping sensitivity. Now you can change this from a one to a 10 and I suggest changing this here down when you're trying to make fine tune adjustments and then changing it back up once you're all done. So then you can change it down to a one and then you can get it just perfect. So then you'll have just a tiny little bit of space and it won't snap and you can just change that back just as easy as going into the general tab, going down to the snap sensitivity and changing it back to 10. Once that's done and you're already moved in place, you'll just lock it so that it can't be moved and then you'll be fine. Then you won't have to worry about accidentally dragging it and snapping it. This will give you fine control over the sources as you move them around. I find this very useful and another tip that I wish I knew when I first started. Number three is auto remux. So this will only really apply to you if you're recording. So if you're recording things and you always have to remux and let's say you have to remux it to an MP4 so that you can use it in your editor, there's actually a way to do that automatically in OBS. If you go into the settings in the advanced tab, all you'll have to do is just scroll down here to where it says recording and you can click the automatic remux to MP4. So this will still allow you to record in something like FLV or MOV or something that will give you like a chance of like the power goes out of the video not being corrupted. You don't want to record an MP4 if something happens like the power goes out and that's something I wish I knew as well is you do not want to record an MP4. If something happens like a power out or OBS crashes it'll actually corrupt your video and it will be unsavable. So your best bet is to record in like MKV or FLV and then remux it to MP4 so that you can edit it. But to do this here automatically all you have to do is just check this here box right here and click apply and the next time that you're done recording when you click the stop recording it'll automatically start to remux so keep that in mind it will automatically start as well that'll be something that will apply each time and you will never have to go and click the remux again and remux them one by one that's something that made my life easier where I record quite a bit I always want to make sure that I'm recording in a file that if something happens like I said if OBS crashes or the power goes out it'll save my work and I'll be able to then remux it to an mp4 later on and still have it and if you're recording mp4 and that happens you lose it all so this is something that I definitely wish I knew when I first started using OBS the next one number four is starting OBS as administrator this is not much of an issue now that Windows 10 and OBS kind of work a little bit better together but still fixed a lot of issues with my games making my stream stutter now to do this is pretty simple I'm going to close OBS here you go over to your OBS and you can right click it now there's an option here to run it as administrator this isn't the tip this is something you'll have to do every time and that's not very convenient what we're going to do is go down to properties and in properties we're going to go over to the compatibility tab and in here it will actually have an option to run this program as administrator all we're going to do is click on that and click apply once we click ok the next time we launch OBS it'll automatically launch it as administrator every single time and you will never have 
have to right click on it again and remember it. So if you were having problems with your game stuttering and launching OBS every single time, and if you're right clicking on it, this will prevent you from ever forgetting to have to click on it. Click run as administrator. That's something I wish I knew when I first started. It's not as irrelevant now, but that is something that I super wish I knew when I first started using OBS. For number five, adding and removing docs. I didn't know up here in the docs that there was more things that you could add. So there's one in here called stats and you can open this one here up and what it does is it shows the stats. It'll give your CPU usage, how much disk space is available, your output, and it'll let you know if you're having drop frames or rendered frames due to the encoder lag or the render lag. I found this here information super useful and I wish I knew this here when I first started using OBS because it lets you know what's wrong with your stream. If you're having an issue that it'll come up here and it'll show that you're dropping frames. Another thing in the docs is it does allow you to add custom browser docs. This can allow you to add a variety of different things. One of the things that stands out is I have a video of how to add custom docs that will allow you to add just about anything. So you can go in here and add the doc and all you'll have to do is name it. We're going to call it name it and then paste the URL of something. For me, what I did was I opened up my Twitch and I want this here quick access panel. This is something I would super enjoy to have in my OBS. So to get this, not a lot of people know that you can go in here and pop this out and then you'll have your quick actions out here. This is gonna give you a browser source that you can copy. And like I said, any browser source, you can close that. You don't need that anymore. You have the browser source. Any browser source at all, you just paste and there you go, you click apply. And any URLs are just websites, web addresses. It's all the same thing. And to find that, you usually just locate it in the spot where it's found. Like I showed you, it's just pop it out for windows like this here. And it's the web address, the www.com is the URL. So you just copy paste those in the docs and some of them work from each of these. So you can add all of this here stuff directly to your OBS that way. Mind you, for ones that access your account, you are gonna have to log in and use your username and password. That's what I had to do for my Twitch activity feed as well. So definitely keep that in mind. For number six, it's the bitrate. Now this might sound a little bit basic, just like bitrate, like everyone kind of knows, but some people actually don't know. And this is something that is a good idea. When you're testing your stream, if you're having issues, sometimes lowering the bitrate will actually make your stream look better. If you put your bitrate too high and your internet can't handle it, and let's say you've tested the internet, and yes, it does show that you're capable of running six megabytes a second or 6,000 KBS, and you set it to that, you don't know if your internet dips below that. That because that's not something you run a test for. If you did a normal speed test, it's not testing for that. So sometimes you have to watch your stream back and see and look for that when it's pixelating and dropping. And there is ways to see you can look for it, but sometimes changing it lower and adjusting it so that it will better match what you can actually do will just provide a better experience. Now, some ways to test this is to run an internet test. That's the most basic way you just run a speed test. Make sure you run it three or four times in a row, really back to back, three or four times. Make sure it's three or four times in a row. That'll give you enough at its lowest. Make sure that the upload is at its lowest. And if it's at a 10 or above the whole time, you probably won't have to worry about this at all. But if it's struggling at a six and you see it dip below five one time, that means it would be probably better to set your stream to 4,500 kilobytes per second. So then when it dips, it won't affect your stream. Some of the best ways to check your upload speed is to upload something to, let's say, YouTube or OneDrive. Make sure it's a big file. Make sure it's 20 minutes and watch your upload speed on either your task manager or there's lots of tools that can do that as well. But I definitely suggest watching it on your task manager. And the lowest point that it gets is probably the safe one you can use. So if you see it dip down to a 1.9, that means 10% under that is probably safe. So 1.8 or 1.7 would be better for your so. 1700 kilobytes sometimes that's all you can run my internet's like that as well i can only run at about 2500 kilobytes even though i have 20 megabytes of upload speed it dips down sometimes to this here number and if i don't have it set there then my internet will experience lag so this is one way to fix that just adjust this here a few times and test it this is one thing that i wish i played with a little bit sooner obs did update in obs 29 now you can change this while you're live so if you see problems with your stream and it's glitching and freezing you can change this while it's live all you have to do is just type in the number difference i would go 100 or 200 at a time maybe not a thousand so you could change it down to that click apply that'll instantly change it while you're live and that could fix the quality of your stream from freezing 
It might not look quite as good, but a smoother experience I think is a better experience. And that's something I wish I knew early on and how to test it. Make sure you upload a big file. And I would suggest uploading something big to YouTube that you just delete or uploading something to OneDrive or Google Drive, whatever that you have. Make sure that it takes 20 minutes and watch the lowest point, then subtract 10%. That should be the safest and the best bitrate quality that you're going to get out of your stream consistently without issues. Number seven was where to find the URLs to add to OBS. So the things that you find in OBS, like your social media overlays, the things that do this, and let's say your sideways chat, um, my latest YouTube video, like just where to find these here links at. So when you add a browser source, it's going to ask you for a URL. Now, where do you find that URL? Well, in stream elements, it's pretty easy. You just go to the streaming tool, you go to the overlay and whatever overlay that you already created, what you do is you just copy the URL. Now this can be called a URL, a link or a web address because they all work. Like you just seen me add one to the doc that I popped out from my twitch.com dashboard. That's a URL, that's a link and that's where you find them. You'll just find them in the spot where your browser is. There is some exceptions, like if you go to tracker.gg or any other website and happen to need to get like an overlay or something, it'll usually say overlay URL and it'll say generate a URL and then it'll make you copy paste these. So you'll need to copy paste the URL for the streaming software and this is for the editor. So if you want to edit it again, you'll have to copy paste it or copy paste it from here. We're just going to give this one here a copy, add it really quick. And bam, once you click OK, you just want to make sure that you size it. And there you go. Once you add it, you just have to resize it so you can see it. This one here was pretty small. It was like really tiny down here. And that's it. That's how you find the URLs. It will be different for each different place, but that there will give you a basics to what to look for and how to find them. I found that was one of the things that a few people in my community struggled with was just where to locate those things and how to add them. There we go. I thought a short one on the URLs would be good as I've seen it was an issue with a few people in my community. Number eight is adding filters. And I don't mean adding a filter like an effect on a video. I mean adding filters on your mic. I wish I would have known about the filters and how to add them quite a bit earlier on in my process because it made my sound quality so much better. To access these, all we have to do is click on the three dots on the mic and go to filters. Now there's a lot of things that you can add. What I mostly use is gain and limiter. These two are perfect. I add a little bit of gain because I'm a little quiet and I add a limiter so that if I happen to get super excited or talk really loud or accidentally blow into the mic, that it's going to stop at a certain point, therefore stopping me from clipping and stopping my, my audio from being bad. If you're streaming and yell into your mic, you can change these around and set a limiter. There's a couple of other ones that you can set in here, like a compressor. Uh, definitely watch a video on how to set a compressor up. There's definitely audio guides everywhere. So if you Google search OBS, how to make your audio better, there's definitely a video by me as well on there. And there's videos by a lot of other people with lo a lot better sound than me. So I definitely take their advice first, but you can add a compressor, you can add gain, limiter, noise gates, and noise suppression. Noise suppression is one, if you have a NVIDIA video card, that you'll be able to use NVIDIA's version of it. So you'll be able to use the noise removal and echo removal from NVIDIA if you have a, a NVIDIA video card. Now these are super great and can super take a bunch of noise out of your background. So if you have a noisy fan or something like that and you just need to remove it, like tick and chair, barking dogs, anything like that, you can just turn on NVIDIA noise removal and it's gone. So that's one thing I wish I knew when I first started because it actually helps my audio quite a bit when I'm live streaming and have something going on in the background. This will cut all the other noise but vocals. So if something's talking in the background, a commercial comes on, yes, you'll be able to hear the talking but all the other noise in between is pretty much gone and to add that is pretty simple and there's a dial where you can change the strength it's stock at one and then you're done just close it and that's something that i wish i knew early on because like i said it super helped my audio it super made it so that when i'm live streaming if something's going on in the background it's not a bunch of noise on my stream even a bus going by you can't hear nothing but that's it for this one. That's my eight tips for OBS. If you think there's better tips that should be in my top eight, let me know down in the comments below. And if you think I forgot or left something out, definitely leave it in the comments below. And if you like or found the video helpful, hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Thanks for watching.